Now, let's get into this with Michael Avenatti. You know, uh, he hasn't been talked about that I'm aware of too much lately, but I am going to bring you a, uh, a short video of Michael Avenatti. He is the disgraced attorney. And, uh, you know, so, you know, he was the one that went around with all these press conferences talking about Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly and working with Kimberly Fox. And he also worked with you know, a few other people like Angelo Clary and uh, Chuck Freeman and uh, another person uh, that he worked with, right, uh, that he was representing. And, you know, he is the disgraced attorney that uh, tried to extort money out of Nike and he took money from Stormy Daniels and from also one of his clients that was disabled or in a wheelchair. Uh, if you will. And so uh, the federal prosecutors are seeking 17 and a half years in federal prison for disgraced attorney Michael Avenatti for his wire and tax fraud scheme in Southern California while the defendant argued for six years, according to legal briefs filed Tuesday. Now he wants to argue that he should only get six years. Now he did a lot of things when he was doing those press conferences and he said a lot of things, you know, that were, uh, very you know negative about mr kelly and he was very arrogant he's a narcissist and he really uh you know felt like he was entitled and privileged to come out and do the things that he did and i always wondered how he got away with holding these press conferences to come out and say the things that he was saying and do the things that he was doing when he was actually participating in crimes federal crimes himself and it just bothered me that he would be able to do these press conferences and it was allowed for him to do those things. And I think that he should have been shut down. And I won't get into, you know, I guess, you know, we can say, well, where was uh, Mr. Kelly's attorneys at the time? You know, because there's been a lot of controversy and, you know, um, talk about the, uh, the type of counsel that he had at the time. So I don't want to get into that. But what I, you know, because... Wow. But what I want to say is that this attorney, he really is a disgraced attorney. And I'm, and I'm glad that they're saying that about him because he did a lot of things that were foul and he was out here doing things and digging a hole for someone else. But look at the hole that he digged uh, for someone else that he's actually in now. And now he wants to argue about his sentence uh, with the prosecutors. No, you deserve what they're going to give you. You shouldn't be getting six years for what you've done. You've caused a lot of problems in a lot of people's lives. Uh, you also, you know, uh, made up stories. And you were probably the one that was part of, you know, making copies of tapes and altering tapes. You did a lot of crooked things, Michael Avenatti. And uh, you have, you're wicked. You're a wicked person. And so you are up here arguing that you should only get six years. I disagree with that. You should get the amount that they're arguing and maybe even more you deserve to be in prison and you shouldn't have had to have bond you shouldn't have been on house arrest you know why you can look at the ocean you know you shouldn't have been able to do any of that what you should have been doing is behind bars where you belong and so prosecutors argue the 17 and a half years should be tacked on to the five years he is serving for convictions in an extortion scheme against nike and for stealing from another client adult film actress stormy daniels in new york yeah see they're arguing that that uh 17 and a half years should be tacked on to the five years that he is serving and you know by law you can get time served for whatever you've already served but i agree with them you know with these whoever they are these prosecutors yes get him get him get him they should give him that time and it's not fair and it's not because i want uh you know vengeance against him it's nothing like that but he deserves to serve the uh, the time according to the law, and it should be the maximum prison time that he should get. Because he didn't just do one thing, he did a lot of things. And um, so he should serve the time. So it says, uh, Avenatti argued that the six years he is recommended should run concurrent with the punishment he is already serving for the New York cases. Well, who is he? See, again, he was arrogant. He still hasn't learned anything. He's not humble. And he will probably never be a humble person because he's out here uh, trying to throw his weight around because he is, you know, 
a disgraced attorney. But at some point at one time, excuse me, he was a practicing attorney. But again, uh, you know, he's trying to throw his weight around to show that he knows something. So he's going to argue with the prosecutors that he should only get six years and it should run concurrent. Who do you think you are? No, you should get the time that they're trying to give you. You should get that time. The judge should give you all of that time uh, on top of the five years, and it should not run concurrent. No, it should not. You should serve all that time. And so U.S. District Judge James Selna is scheduled to sentence Avenatti on November 7th. So uh, I will keep you all updated on, uh, you know, as I see them come in, you know, these stories unfold, you know, the information. Uh, he's supposed to be sentenced November 7th, which is a few weeks away, right? Uh, so, and... um he should get the he should get all the time that they are trying to give him because he deserves that he really does he did a lot of wrong and he should serve the time for the wrong that he did and so Avenatti made an open plea to resolve most of the charges against him in Santa Ana meaning he had no guarantee what punishment prosecutors would seek it is a rare move for defendants because they have no idea what punishment they may face okay and so Abenati, who won a mistrial motion last year when Selna found prosecutors had withheld evidence the attorney was seeking to use in his trial, said he made the open plea to spare the five victims another trial. Now, the court system, the expense, and because he could not reach an agreement on a plea deal with prosecutors. No, because he only probably wanted to serve one year or something, you know, or time served. He don't feel like he should serve any prison time. He feels like he's an exception to the rule because he is an attorney. And soon to be, uh, you know, he won't be able to practice law anymore. But because of that, he feels like that he shouldn't serve any time. He should be getting time served. And so he's trying to do use his strategies of being an attorney, you know, uh, against the prosecutors and the judge. And so there was a mistrial because they withheld evidence. Now, I don't agree with uh, prosecutors withholding evidence because we've seen how corrupt our judicial system is and has even become more we see what's going on and they'll do anything a lot of these uh prosecutors to get a conviction but in this case i do believe that michael Avenatti should serve the time that they are seeking because he deserves to serve that time he's done a lot of things and he should do his time but of course you know we have to wait and see how it unfolds you know with this whole thing uh with him and so in the sense the sentencing recommendation federal um Excuse me, federal prosecutors said Avenatti's schemes followed a general pattern in which he would lie about the true terms of the settlement agreement he had negotiated for the client, conceal the settlement payments that the counterparty had made, secretly take and spend the settlement proceeds that belonged to the client, and lull the client into not complaining or investigating farther by providing small advances on the supposedly yet to be paid funds. Now, you see all this corrupt stuff that he's done, and as an attorney, he was an attorney, okay? He went to school. He also took an oath as well. And here he is doing these things, lying about people's settlements. You know, people needed their money. Uh, there were people, one of those clients, uh, you, know, you know, that you took from, that person obviously needed their money. And most of the time when a client has been injured in an accident or whatever it may be, they usually need their money because they are probably in debt and they're hanging on by a strand or thread because they, you know, their life has changed significantly because of their injuries and you stole money from them. This is a disgrace. It really, really is a disgrace of what you have done, Michael Avenatti, and you deserve to serve that time. And you, it was a pattern. And you were going around trying to extort money out of people because you also tried to extort money out of Mr. Kelly. $250,000 on behalf of, you know, the disgraced parent, which he is, is Angelo Clary. He's a disgraced father because he did a lot of wrongdoing with his wife. And they all deserve to be held accountable uh, you know, for the things that they've done. And then these prosecutors given immunity uh, to all of these crooks and criminals uh, and things like that is really sad. But Michael Avenatti, you do deserve to uh, have more than five years that you are serving now because you had a pattern of doing this. You lied about the true terms of these settlement agreements that you had negotiated for the client. You even concealed the settlement payments that the counterparty had made. And that's really disgraceful. Uh, you are a thief, Michael Avenatti. You you showed that you are a thief. I mean, I, I mean, 
Uh, I can read between the lines. This is public information. And you was a thief. You stole from your clients. And then you wanted to sue Fox News before uh, coming out saying things about you. But they only reported what was the truth, like the judge said. And I'm only reporting what the truth is. I mean, it is the truth. I'll say allegedly, but it's public information, you know, so it's the truth. And you secretly took and spent the settlement proceed proceeds that belong to the client. You actually did that too. You bought a jet or a plane, whatever you were doing with these people's money. And you lured the client into not complaining. So what did you do? Threaten them? I don't know if you did, but did you threaten them? I'm asking the question. Did you threaten these people, your clients? You know, did you sh try to shut them up? You know, uh, because you didn't want them to complain. And then you even, uh, it says that not into complaining or investigating farther because what you did is you gave them a, a little money here and there to shut them up, you know, advances on their supposedly yet to be paid funds. You, 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 that's wrong, Michael Avenatti. And I'm surprised, I'm, I'm not surprised, but I'm saddened by the fact that Kimberly Fox is still in office over there in what, Chicago, area and she's the the district attorney or whatever she is over there uh uh whoever she is and uh, i may have her title wrong but whoever she is and if you can correct me if i'm wrong you can do it in the comments leave your respectful comments below but whatever kimberly fox is you worked with her she worked with you and it's shameful that you know as a politician we still cannot get good people in office and, uh, thank, you know, we just can't. I mean, it, that's why I always keep saying, you know, start doing your research on these people before you vote them in office and don't vote for her anymore. Hopefully there's someone really good that's going to be fair and is going to be for the people, by the people, because this is not right for them to come together, you know, uh, to do what they did. And then now you facing charges, Michael Avenatti and even Kimberly Fox. She allegedly beat on her husband, you know, and all types of stuff. We got some people out here, man, that sit up here and dig holes for other folks, but then they find themselves in the hole that they dig, and then they 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 don't realize that their karma is coming up on them, and that they they don't know what their karma their comeback is going to be against them, you know. And so, because uh, I was reading a comment just to kind of go off a little on this this comment about Cardi B going after Tasha K. And asking for a bond to be set for the three point what uh four million or seven million or whatever it was to be set. And uh some people are like, Well, Cardi B just needs to stop and leave her alone. She just being greedy and, and she has money, she doesn't need the money. And there's a lot of people saying, Nope, hold up, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute. And that's what they were saying, like, no. Cardi B has a right to seek what she wants, and Tasha K should have just stopped. Tasha K should have stopped when she had an opportunity to stop. And you cannot tell people what their comeback is going to be. Now, people, you know, some of them females were like, it was a couple of them. Well, you know, she just needs to stop, you know, just leave Tasha K alone. No, she asked for it. Tasha K asked for it. And you cannot tell people what their comeback is going to be. So if their comeback is more swift and more strategized and more harsher or better, whatever you call it, if their comeback is better than the person that put it out there, Hey, you know, if you're going to put it out there and start something and go after people, you have to be prepared to accept your comeback. You have to be prepared for the comeback. And you know what? A lot of times, evildoers are not prepared for their comeback, for the comeback, and they're not prepared for their downfall. I'm just keeping it real, people. A lot of times, evildoers, people that do other folks wrong, they not prepared for their comeback and they're not prepared for their downfall. And Michael Avenatti don't want to go to jail for 17 or prison for 17 and a half years. He want to, you know, his sentences to run concurrent and he want to, you know, only get six years. No, bro. No, bro, bro. B-R-U-H, bro. However they want to call it. No, you, no, 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 no. Michael Avenatti, no, 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 no. Dude, you need to humble yourself and you need to accept your punishment. You had a lot to say about Mr. Kelly. You had a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to say. And you even had a lot, a lot, a lot to say about Nike. When you was up there extort, trying to extort Nike, you had a lot to say about Nike. You thought that you was going to threaten Nike. Nike's money is long, bro. Their money is long and you should never have done what you have done, Michael Avenatti. So anyway, prosecutors also said he was a tax cheat.
Wow. And cited his failure to pay payroll taxes after his firm acquired Tully's Coffee in bankruptcy and then obstructed the IRS when the agency attempted to collect the amount due. Now, you know what? See, this is what I'm talking about. It's more and more as I talk and put my little two cents in. There's a lot going on here, Michael Avenatti, and you only think you should get six years? Huh? And your sentence should run concurrent so you could get time served? Brother, no. No, Michael Avenatti. So prosecutors argue Avenatti stole $12.35 million from his clients. That's a lot of money. And failed to pay about $3.2 million in payroll taxes from the coffee company and $1.6 million in payroll taxes from his law firm. Now, you all remember that coffee co company he bought? Yeah, I remember that. And the thing is, too, is he was talking about how Mr. Kelly will never see the light of day. Well, will he? Because if they sentence him, will he see it? They need to put him behind bars, though. He should not be able to serve his time anymore at his friend's house, you know, in Orange County. But prosecutors also make a legal argument that Avenatti, despite his guilty plea, has not taken responsibility for his crimes because he has not acknowledged culpability in more specific terms. You know what? He hasn't. Because if he's up here arguing that he should only get six, term, uh, six years and it should, his sentence should run concurrent, he is not remorseful. Michael Avenatti is not remorseful for the crimes he committed against anyone and the things he did to, to try to hurt other people. And all them press conferences, I can't get over, you know, them press conferences, really? I didn't like that. I did not like that. And I'm telling the truth. Who are you, man? Uh, you know, he hasn't admitted it. He has not taken any type of ownership or responsibility. He hasn't. He needs to be held accountable. Never has taken any responsibility for what he's done. For instance, prosecutors point to Avenatti's contesting of the restitution he owes. He's even contesting the restitution. See, it's no fun when the rabbit has the gun. It's no fun when the rabbit is chasing the hunter, right? It's no fun. Michael Avenatti, it's no fun, is it? You are even, uh, you know, uh, contesting the restitution that you owe. Why? When you stole all this money. Who are you that you feel like you should get off and that you shouldn't have to do what's right by the people for the people? Okay, so prosecutors acknowledge that Avenatti has written an apology letter to his victims, but he did not identify any specific conduct for which he was apologizing. Let me tell you something. See, when we go to God, right? And, he, and I'm not saying he went to God, but what I'm saying is he wrote this letter, right? He didn't even uh, identify any specific conduct for which he was apologizing for. When we go to God, we need to specifically identify the sins that we've committed. We just can't go, well, God, I'm sorry. You know what I did. God, I'm sorry for... We need to, excuse me, even though God already knows, we need to identify the specific sins that we have committed to God. He wants to hear those specific sins, even though he knows what we've done. Because we have to have a godly sorrow and be truly remorseful for what we've done. Michael Avenatti is not remorseful. He's pretending to be remorseful because he's not even identifying any specific conduct for which he was apologizing. So the basis is like, well, what are you apologizing? We read the letter, but we don't know what you're apologizing for. What are you apologizing for, Michael Avenatti? Well, I can, you know, I'm sorry for the wrong I've done. What wrong have you done, Michael Avenatti? We want to know specifically, Michael Avenatti, from you, or the prosecutors want to know from you what you are specifically apologizing for. Specific conduct and what you're apologizing for and the people that you hurt, the victims. Your letter means nothing, Michael Avenatti. And again, the defendant said the bare minimum and only said it when the issue of his acceptance of responsibility is being considered in connection with his sentencing. He wants the bare minimum. He wants to, he wants to serve the bare minimum. The bare minimum is what he wants to serve, you all. The bare minimum. He wants to serve only the bare minimum of the things he's done. 
This self-serving apology does not reflect an acceptance of responsibility worthy of recognition <laughs> by a two-level reduction in his offense level under federal law. It's not worthy of acceptance. And the prosecutors also argue that his convictions in New York federal court should also boost his punishment. Yes. Yes, it should. Mm-hmm. And probation officials recommended a stiffer sentence than the one offered by prosecutors. They want a stiffer sentence. Stiffer sentence. The probation officials. So Avenatti argued that the recommended punishment from probation officials is dramatically and punitively higher than other fraud and tax cases. Did they have a pattern or do you have a pattern? See, Michael Avenatti, you had a pattern of it and you wasn't going to stop. You were going to keep doing it as long as you got away with it. But it's, it's very important that you don't bring unjust cause against another brother or sister. And you brought unjust cause against R. Kelly. You really did. You brought unjust cause against Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly. You brought unjust cause. And you knew that the clients you was representing were fraudulent. They wasn't being truthful about the part they played. You did those things, Michael Abernathy. And now you're trying to say that it's dramatic. Your punishment is dramatic and punitive. So Abernathy painted a picture of a difficult childhood. Really, Michael Abernathy? You're painting a, a, uh, you're painting a picture of a difficult childhood that led him to believe he had to work hard and rely solely on himself to achieve success and contribute to society. His advisory counsel, Dean Stewart, wrote in the sentencing brief. So did not other people have a difficult childhood, Michael Abernathy? I don't know about you know, Stormy Daniels' childhood or that other client. But I, I, I read uh, in Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly's book, and I also, uh, you know, read about things that has happened to him. And did he not have a difficult childhood, Mr. Uh, Avenatti? Did he not have a difficult childhood? Did he not go through some trauma in his own life and you refused to extend grace? You refused to have mercy and you did all this stuff on press conferences, not ever thinking that your federal crimes that you were committing will come back on you and that you will be char prosecute, uh, charged and prosecuted for your federal crimes and you want us to have empathy for you for your difficult childhood. Did you really have a difficult childhood, Mr. Uh, Avenatti, that led you to believe that you had to work hard? But you use people to help you make up stories, lie, hold press conference, alter tapes mm, against Mr. Kelly. And didn't Mr. Sylvester Kelly work hard? Didn't he work hard for where he was and what, what, how he achieved? But you want folks to, to, to uh, have empathy for your difficult childhood that you say you had. Um, he, and then Michael Avenatti goes on to say that he started working at 15, including at a McDonald's. So Michael Avenatti. Uh, I didn't want this video to be long, but it'll be a little longer than I thought, and hopefully we'll get through it quickly. But anyway, Michael Avenatti, you talked about R. Kelly. You talked about him going to McDonald's with looking for little girls or whatever you said in your press conference. You said all that stuff, but you say you started working at McDonald's when you was 15. Ooh, ain't that the kettle calling? Ooh, the pot black, man. Man, it's no fun when the rabbit's got the gun and the rabbit is chasing the hunter. And it says he worked in retail stores and when he was 17, worked in an athletic complex in St. Louis. They probably glad that you're not in St. Louis anymore. Ooh, they probably glad. They don't need no more crime in St. Louis. 
They don't need no more contributing factors in St. Louis, Michael Avenatti, and where he managed five employees and umpired over 500 baseball games. Did you? I'm not impressed, Michael Avenatti. But he said he had to work full time to pay for his college education and was the first in his family to earn advanced degrees. Then you should have been that example. There is no way you should be where you at right now if you was the first person to earn uh, advanced degrees in your family. You let your family down, Michael Avenatti. And you say that you earned a law degree from George Washington University Law School. Moved to California and passed the bar on your first try and settled in Newport Beach in 2000. Michael Avenatti, you was just not grateful. It don't sound like you was grateful. It sound like you got the big head. You were less, less than humble. You lacked humility because most people don't pass the bar on the first try. So you, you know, you felt pumped up. But we have to be careful about that pumping ourselves up. You know, proud. God doesn't like a proud look, Michael Avenatti. Look at that look on your face. God doesn't like a proud look. Pumping yourself up. You're saying all these things, Michael Avenatti. And you think the prosecutors really care about you living in Newport Beach and, and all that stuff and, uh, you know, earning your law degree from Washington University and passing the bar on the first try? Do you think they care about that? Because all the things you've done does not align. You went to school. Yeah, that looks good. Your resume looks good. Your portfolio looks good, Michael Avenatti. But it doesn't align with your behaviors and your crimes that you committed. It doesn't align, Michael Avenatti. And so Stewart wants to say that Avenatti is a loyal, loving, supportive, and fun father of his two teenage daughters and eight-year-old son, Stewart wrote. Wow. Hmm. Okay. I won't say nothing about that because, you know, but anyway. Uh, Avenatti also argued that his jailing in New York City while awaiting trial there in horrendous conditions should lead to a lesser sentence. So you feel that because the conditions in the New York City jail was horrendous, so you should get a let should lead to a lesser sentence? Really, Michael Avenatti? And we got a lot of innocent men behind bars right now. Innocent black men, Mr. Uh, Avenatti. And they're not getting lesser sentences. Matter of fact, they still waiting for their vindication. They're not getting lesser sentences or vindication. And a lot of black men are overcharged. And they're not getting lesser sentences because of the horrendous conditions in the jails that they're in or the prisons. Man, 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 I'm glad. I, you know, I finally got to this. I finally got to this. I've been meaning to do it and I got to it because I'm like, wow. And Avenatti filed a claim with the government. <laughs> he filed a claim with the government, you all. You all, Y-O-U and then A-L-L, -L, whoever is out here listening, Michael Avenatti filed a claim with the government. But the government denied it, which denied it, alleging he was placed in solitary confinement as punishment for being a prominent critic of former President Donald Trump. And he's trying to say that the, the government, uh, you know, put him in solitary confinement, you know, and punished him, you know. So punitive actions against him because he was a prominent critic of former President Donald Trump. So during the pandemic, Selna ordered Avenatti serve under home confinement with a friend in Venice as he awaited his trial. So he was in Venice, uh, California or Venice Beach or wherever is at Venice, California is usually Venice Beach. OK. So Selma had a little empathy for you, Michael. Michael, Michael. Selma had a little empathy for you. But while in custody at Terminal Island, Avenatti has a spotless disciplinary record, has been a model inmate, and currently has a security classification of minimum, Stewart wrote. Well, he couldn't have nothing but a spotless record, really, if he was in solitary confinement. But see, you know, he did all that talking against Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly. He did a lot of talking with the Nike, you know, talking smack. He was big and bad. Now, look, ain't no fun. 
Woo, there's no fun when the tables are turned, okay? So Avenatti was also admitted into a treatment program and is active in Alcoholic Anonymous. So is he trying to say that he has a drinking problem and that is why uh, he did all these things? He wants to show good faith, right? But it's still not about other people. It's about he making it still, it's self-serving, you all. Self-serving, self-centered, man-centered. That's what he's about. Not about, you know, God-centered and God-focused and doing the right thing and admitting his responsibility and taking accountability. No, it's, all of this is to try to get off. And I hope the judge sees through it and, and, and I hope they go, no, we understand you did all those things, but uh, guess what? You still need to, you know, serve that time. And he has also been taking courses to prepare him for a life after prison as the suspended attorney will soon surrender his law license and will not be able to ever practice law again. Michael Avenatti, let me say this to you. <laughs> if you're listening, let me say it. R. Kelly, Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly will always have his, his gift. He'll always be able to sing beautiful music and songs. What you did was wrong, Michael Avenatti. And you know what you did was wrong. You need to examine your heart, brother, your soul, because it's evil and wicked. But see, you won't be able to practice law again. You're going to have to do something if you ever get out of jail. But guess what, though? And I, I don't know what time you're going to get. You may, may not get time. I'm, I'm just seeing what they saying you should get. But you're going to have to, you know, but R. Kelly always have his voice to sing. He's blessed. He's a musical genius. He's still singing now. Somewhere R. Kelly is singing. He has music out there. And you probably, I don't know if you were just envious. And you let all that go to your head when you start representing crooked people. People with criminal backgrounds just like you. No wonder it resonated and you resonated with them and did what you did because you was dealing with some folks with criminal backgrounds also. Now, uh, Avedotti also argued that multiple boxes of thank you cards and letters from former clients were destroyed by the government so he cannot use them to help him make his case for a lesser sentence. You shouldn't be able to. You shouldn't be able to do it either. See, the scale shouldn't be so tilted against somebody else. See, R. Kelly, the scales was tilted against Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly. And I remember this. And so, uh, you know, uh, A.D., I'll use her name, A.D., she did not allow any good stuff to be said about Mr. Kelly. But you was part of the takedown. Uh, and that's why I'm saying these things, because you was part of it. You was part of it. And so, see, what goes around karma Karma, Michael Avenatti, and every man will reap it what they sow it, but karma with a K, capital K. See, Avenatti argued that he has taken steps to show his acceptance of responsibility with the letters of apology to his victims and by relinquishing any rights he had to a private jet he purchased with money he stole from clients. Well, he was going to have to relinquish it anyway. See, you didn't just do, see, you telling them folks in the court of law, the officers of the court, that you did it on your own. No, Michael Avenatti, you wouldn't have did it. The government was going to seize it anyway. If they didn't seize it, they were going to seize it. And again, you never mentioned what you were apologizing for. You didn't mention that. You didn't mention in your letter what you were apologizing for when you wrote that letter. Uh, and you didn't even mention any specific conduct of what you've done wrong. So your apology letter, it means nothing. Go back. You need to go back to the drawing board. And not the drawing board, but the writing pad. I'm sorry. Go back to the writing pad, Michael Avenatti, and try to get it right again next time. Try again, Michael Avenatti. Go back to the writing pad. And while the government argued there were no way the two cases in New York should be combined, Avenatti said they should have been. Mm, he's still arguing. He argued that that had that been done, that had that been done, he would not be facing the prospect of a past criminal history that will boost his exposure in the Santa Ana case. Wow. So uh, let me say this. So Mr. R. Kelly, uh, Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly, 
they went back in his past he had already been tried it's like double jeopardy but they said it couldn't be double jeopardy because it was a federal case versus a state case but they went all the way back right and tried this man for something he was found innocent of and you got on your platform out in public and you held all these press conferences about mr kelly hmm Abinadi had no prior criminal history before his convictions in New York. R. Kelly didn't have no criminal history. He was found not guilty. Huh. So you think that you're privileged. You think you have the complexion for the protection. I, 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 okay, um, let me go on. I was going to say something, but I better not. Okay. Avenatti argued federal prosecutors forced him to defend, the three, defend three cases on both coasts and could have combined them all in, into one case. Could they? Did they combine all of Mr. Kelly's cases? Oh, I'm going to remind you, Mr. Uh, uh, Michael Avenatti. I'm going to remind you. <laughs> I'm going to remind you, man. I'm going to remind you. You should not get no special treatment. Now, Avenatti said this highly unusual decision, highly unusual decision resulted from defenders' notoriety. Really, Michael? R. Kelly has notoriety? And you were sitting up there calling him disgraced, but you're disgraced. R. Kelly has notoriety. And you're talking about your notoriety and that's why you're being treated like this? Really, Michael Avenatti? The governor's desire to have three high-profile prosecutions of defendant and an internal turf battle within the Department of Justice. He added, this is improper and highly prejudicial. Prejudicial? Really, Michael? Was it prejudicial when you was up there holding all these press conferences? Was it? Was it prejudicial when you was up here holding all these press conferences against Mr. Kelly? Hmm. Look at that face. Look at that face. Look at that look. Hmm. Thinking something right being in there. I, I yeah. Mm-hmm. Avenatti quoted former Southern District of New York U.S. Attorney Jeffrey Berman's book on his efforts to work out the so-called turf battle with the former Central District of California U.S. Attorney Nicola Hanna. Avenatti said the federal prosecutors were more concerned over, the, over who would benefit from a high-profile prosecution of defendant and avoid being punished by main justice. These statements also undermine consistent representations from the government that main justice was never involved, excuse me, excuse me, was never involved in the prosecution of defendant. You all, um, I'm going to just read a couple of comments. One of them says criminal, a uh, convicted criminal needs more punishment. Another, uh, Comment says, bye-bye, dirtball attorney. Now your luxury lifestyle will not longer be it. Will be behind bars with not a three-piece suit, but a bright orange jumpsuit. Have fun. And someone said, doesn't matter. He'll be a great jailhouse lawyer. And someone else said he will be in the Rainbow Factory acquiring new skills from the Latino Lipstick Club. No offense to any Latinos, but that was just a comment that was made. And so you all, please leave your respectful comments below because all of you uh, that know what Michael Avenatti did, all those press comps, remind, I'm reminding you all of that. I am actually reminding you all of the press conference that he did against, the, against Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly, all the bad things, the ugly things that he said about this man and let me tell you, the tables have turned. Um, you know, look at what he's going through. But see, he's an attorney, so he's trying to fight his case based on law, you know, for him being an attorney and all of that. But you know what? His portfolio, where he went to school and passed the bar on the first time and all that, those things, and that he say he worked hard, started working hard and all this, 
those things right there, that should have made him a better person overall that he wouldn't be facing what he's facing. But you know, sometimes people get too big for their head. They get arrogant, narcissists, they're, they lack humility. They think, you know, they become uh, man-centered and self-centered. And that's what he was instead of God-centered and God-focused. He, he, he um, you know, he became too big for his britches. And somewhere, somebody got to, you know, sit him down and say, look, you can't commit crimes. You can't take advantage of your clients. You can't do these things that you've done, that you've been doing, stealing their money and thinking that you have a right to get away with it. And you think that you are, uh, you know, exceptional. You feel like you're entitled and you feel like you're privileged because you had lived a privileged cr uh, criminal uh, corrupt life on other people's settlements. That's what you were doing. And you stole from people. And not only did you do that, um, you know, Michael Avenatti, but you feel like you shouldn't even serve any time. That's the thing that really, you know, mm, you feel like you shouldn't serve any time for what you've done. And you want to argue that you should just get six years and it should run concurrently. So you can get what time served and get off and only do one more year and get out. No, 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 no. And you all please again, share this video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber share this video though because we need we need people to be reminded of what michael avenatti did reminded of what he's done and the prosecutors need to be reminded of this as well they need to be reminded the the judge needs to know if he's not knowing he needs to really step up his game judge selna your honorable judge selna uh no disrespect because this is what we need to make sure that the scales are not, uh, you know, uh, tilted so bad against one person that should not be in jail. They uh, should be out of jail, uh, you know, and, and that are innocent when we have these uh, wrongful, wrongful convictions. Uh, and then we have someone like Michael Avenatti. This is not a wrongful conviction. Michael Avenatti did the things that he did do. This is not a made up. That's why he lost his suit uh, against Fox News, because these are things that he really did. He actually did these things. And so therefore, he definitely needs to serve his time. And for the men that are truly innocent, they need to be vindicated and let out. But Michael Avenatti, you need to be going in. And these the people that's innocent need to be let out. And, and, and that's what I'm saying right here. So we cannot forget the things that you have done, Michael Avenatti. So again, you all leave your respectful comments below. Uh, you know, give a thumbs up to the video, share the video, okay? And so uh, let me go ahead and do this. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Please leave your respectful comments below. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. News reporting. This is what the news is. That's what I'm reporting. And then fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. So again, thank you all, and I will be back with you soon.